Uh-oh. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Cthulhu Rises. Oh. Everyone does. I did that bit last week. We're not doing yes, it again. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Cthulhu Rises. Everybody oh. dies, where the goal is not to actually kill these four in particular, but kill everyone else, drive these people insane. <laughs> I am Kyle. I'm the wonderful DM. Uh, before we even get started tonight, uh, let's go through the whole rigmarole that I have to do at the beginning, even though I wish I could do it at the end. Follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter, take a look at our YouTube archives if you want to go ahead and play any kind of our games. You can't do it this week! This week is the calamity! It's cred! It's Franks. And so you can't play. But next week, next Saturday, you can play in a one-shot, especially if you've been DMing for such a long time. And you do that by hitting us up on Twitter or at mhoboinc at gmail.com if you want to get some really cool awesome swag you can click on the link around here uh there is no cred uh swag yet uh i blame carol for that one yeah you can our you chief totally designer can. Yeah. yeah yeah you actually totally could. can uh called her out uh but soon soon she promises to make something terrifying that will make you uh, uh, roll wisdom saving throws or go insane. It's it's true. It's magnificent, I'm told. Uh, if you don't want to look at our terrible faces, I mean, two of us are in cosplay. Um, you know, Three. me and Bran are really after it. And then, you know, you have Anja, Caitlin, and Riley just doing their thing. Oh, Caitlin, can you turn your name to Cleo before I forget? Because I'm going to call you uh, uh, Caitlin, uh, and I will... I won't care, actually, because, I mean, what's going to happen, really? Uh, finally, if you don't want to look at our terrible faces, you can also click on the link that'll take you to an audio podcast where you can listen to us instead. Uh, there's seven episodes previous to this. We understand you don't have time. You're driving a car. You probably shouldn't watch a screen. Honestly, I condone that you do watch the episodes uh, as you drive, because they really add that interactive feel as you watch them, uh, that dread, that mounting tension as you're careening your car through the 465 or something like that. Um, excellent for the nerves. Uh, finally, we would like to thank, I'm going to uh, uh, drop the mic again on our artist D for doing these wonderful <laughs> character portraits. Bam! Can't stop me. I'm going to I'm going to win every time. Uh, but it's not a competition. It is. Uh, and so we'd like to thank her for her wonderful artwork. Uh, <laughs> and then thank Pirate Dog Dice the Dice. Honestly, they need to make Riley some dice quickly so he doesn't crash and kill and poison. And you know there's a volcano on this island, right, Ernie? You, I'll you navigate us probably... <laughs> right to it. <laughs> <laughs> Will that be a nat one or a nat twenty? I, I guess all that matters is it if it's intentional or not, right? Exactly. Right to the right to that caldera, huh? Right. Pretty sure that's where the right campaign's ending, it. anyways. So, <laughs> oh, you fools! You'll never know. Anyway, <laughs> pirate dog dice for when you need some dice that roll decently better than what Ernie ever could with his normal dice. Uh, and then also a thanks to our other sponsor, Odd Fish Games and their Adventure Sense. Does your game smell like fish? Ours does. But that's mostly because ah. I like to keep a pan of uh, lobster shells and crawfish shells at my feet. Uh, some of them were living once, and they really do a nice job of picking that dead skin off your toes. You've heard of the goldfish in a bowl thing great great pedicures turns out lobsters crawfish do a much better job they remove the flesh a lot faster honestly in my opinion you do have to feed them though as i found out recently uh and then also <laughs> other uh project the shine project if you are writing a story like i have where uh you have taken a campaign book here and you are adding four uh amazing characters with amazing backstories they really help add those questions you need to ask yourself as you are trying to write a campaign around them speaking of them let's go around the table real fast introduce them uh let's start with um say something nice say something nice 
<laughs> Let's start with my Carol. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, you're going to start with me. That wasn't saying anything nice, but it wasn't saying anything bad either. So I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everybody. My name is Carol, as he said. I am a longtime game gamer, occasional GM, and a commission beanie painter. And in this campaign, I play Anja Jaeger. Anja. We'll see if Kyle gets it right. Anja Jaeger, my half-elven ranger. That was Anja Jaeger, everybody. Uh, <laughs> moving on quickly to DJ. DJ, who are you playing tonight? Same character I play every night, Kyle. <laughs> Bram. No one got the pink, uh, uh, pinky in the pinky brain. The brain, 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 actually. Uh, our, to tonight. <laughs> finally uh uh our most colorful uh, uh person here on the show tonight just having them here really brightens up everything that goes on here tonight <sighs> hold on odds even caitlin yeah it's caitlin caitlin why don't you introduce yourself it's Caitlin. I play Cleo, the female Asimar, what sorceress? And I'm still alive, so that's good. We're all still alive. I honestly I forgot. Are we on the boat still? Or are we back on land? We're on land. You are okay. on land. Don't you remember? <laughs> the, don't you remember uh, uh, that dire boar that you know uh, yeah. that killed you, know, you in one hit? The one that the, the hit you like a truck. In the last yeah. session, maybe you all the little piglets to fend for piglets. themselves. Yeah, oh, yes, that's right. Yes, We're yes. on our island. You've orphaned yeah. many people on this island already. You are the murder hobos. I wish I didn't have in my game. <laughs> Speaking of murder hobos, Ernie, introduce yourself and your character, Riley. Uh, yeah, so I play Riley, the warlock who's just trying to help. Um, he's a very curious fellow. <laughs> And uh, I think last time I tried to prepare food for everyone, again, being a helper, and I, I think I poisoned everyone. You're I all going to die. Again. We're all going to die now. Yeah, I'm interested to see what those con saves were for at the end Everything's of the last episode. Gosh, Everything's fine. Gosh, yeah. fine. Everything's fine. You know, uh, a lot of you people traveled out into the woods. You didn't check for ticks when you got back. Um, <laughs> gosh. That's why I, I gotta wear all the heavy clothes. You really ought to, man. I, I, my kid woke up saying he needed a band aid. My three year old, oh, and no. he's touching the back of his head, and I go, "Oh, what's going on there?" I open it up, a tick the size <laughs> of my pinky finger, bulging with blood on the back end of it. And I'm and like, "Oh my gosh, it. what Cthulian horror has spawned this beast?" Uh. We'll find out tonight. Uh, he has Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever. Uh, he's going no. to... Does he? I have no <laughs> idea. Oh. So how did you, how did you, I assume, how did you remove it? I uh, lit up a cigarette. Uh, I quit smoking seven years That's... ago, but I picked it up again just for this, and I just jabbed it into <laughs> the back of his head. I only missed three times. It's fine. He needs a haircut. That's okay. <laughs> Uh, but the tick is off, and uh, uh, he just has some spots on his skin here and there. And Wait, have you seen Happy Tree Friends? Yeah. yeah That's point. literally what I'm thinking of when he, like, shaves the kid's hair, and he just, like, <gasps> takes the chunk off, and it's like... <laughs> yeah, that's about right. <laughs> I'm trying to make him look like that, he's I was dead. probably in, like, fifth grade or something. <laughs> Whatever the song goes, I love it. <laughs> and I thought happy just trying to make his kid like look like his father. Pretty much, yeah. All right. Guys, <laughs> let's get into it. I've wasted 10 minutes, 10 of your precious 120 minutes. I, I'm now trying I to delay things so we don't deal with that friggin' fail for it to save. I click the link. Hey, if it makes you feel better, one of you failed several four to two six <laughs> that be this is horrible so <laughs> last time we had a uh, attack on the it's called a skiff i decided it's called the skiff right i'm gonna say it's a skiff you were heading onto shore onto your little rowboat when you were attacked by several deep ones uh 
who had uh, taken uh, a drastic toll on you guys and was busy drowning Riley uh, uh, to death. Yeah, we'll go with that. Drowning Riley to death. He's gone now. That's good. He disappeared. He really oh, did. I, I, That's creeping I, I, me out a little bit. I'm still <laughs> here. Don't worry. <laughs> Happy oh, tree okay. friends. Happy tree friends. <laughs> yeah, right, no, that's about it. that's about right. That's the, about the right. Pe- the about people right. are getting impatient. We gotta get started the game. Okay, okay. Oh my gosh. Yeah, there's a new background tonight too. Oh, I love that. You're in a scary jungle, and now you're all witnessing a scary jungle in the night. Um so managed to save Riley. Riley saved himself, maybe possibly. You killed the big one, but the smaller deep one, perhaps more clever then the larger one managed to escape. When you got on land, everyone was, uh, morale was terrible. The uh, crew uh, looked terrible. And so first mate Pasela and Captain Kenza sent two of you off to go find some fresh food um, to celebrate reaching land in some condition at least. Uh, one of you decided to help set up camp with the rest of the crew. That went as well as it always does when Riley gets involved. <laughs> and the last of you, Bran, went down searching through the cargo and some broken shipment that had arrived on shore where you found three corpses, drowned sailors, except for one who appeared to have dried in the sun after crawling ashore. Uh, also, don't of... forget that Bran gave everyone laxatives. That is true, yes. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me. Everyone make another constitution saving roll, please. I wasn't around for that. <laughs> 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 the hunting party was successful. They orphaned uh, many, many borlets <laughs> while killing the mother and bringing back barely any of its carcass and leaving the rest of it to rot and so that the little borlets could snuggle against what was left of their mother after it took they as it. much of that as i possibly could it was we a very big boar so the piglets I'm... could survive for a little bit yeah but i took i took as much as i could take cannibal so boars made, that's gonna I'm be making... a good thing to add to this island i made no i made i'm gonna make i made jerky when i get back well there you, you go. know yeah, yeah. And bacon. <laughs> you are a very talented ranger on the beach. Yeah, you make yeah, it bacon. It. That's clearly so. <laughs> <laughs> you all managed to get back, um, celebrate a little bit, you know, being alive, being safe in camp. Uh, Pasela sets the watch for the night. Uh, and as you all fall asleep, I had you roll constitution saving throws because... What kind of Cthulhu game ends when it's not just on the edge of a cliff? And I realize right now, as I said all this, while I have pulled everything out, I did not pull out what your saves were. Uh, Cleo got a nat one. There were two sevens, a four, and a 14. Bran had to do a second con save and gets a nine. That's right. That sounded right, yeah. I Almost. know what I, Anja I got, got the nat one. No, I got a... Cle- Cleo got a nat one. No, it wasn't me. I got the seven, yeah. which would oh. have been a five. Nine? Yeah. Oh, okay. According to my notes. <laughs> yeah, I got no. I it said I, I if I I had to get a yeah I got a seven and that's not an out one. I don't have that good a constitution save. All right. It's still a fail. Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure everyone failed. Yeah. No, it's fine. We're Actually, die. had absolutely nothing to do with Constitution saving throw. It just was the order that you all dream tonight. So, oh. Bran, with the 14, we start with you, and as you dream, you find yourself nine years old again, back at the Corwell Mansion, wandering the halls. Uh, your mother is recently passed away you walk down the halls and everything is still well taken care of but there's certainly a a looming emptiness that pervades the place despite the butler the housekeepers 
And while everything is spick and span, there are several portraits, several capture scrolls of your mother, of Lord Corwell and your mother, of all of you together, your stepbrother Marcus there. Uh, and those are covered with a layer of dust. Lord Corwell has ordered that nothing be touched that has an image of your mother on it. And even as you walk down the halls, you can smell decaying flowers, bouquets that were put up in honor of your mother. And again, untouched, ordered uh, by your stepfather. The hallways are dark, most of the curtains pulled. Looming to one side of you, you see the Corwell family crest hanging off banners or on shields here and there. And you just find yourself wandering aimlessly until you reach uh, an open courtyard. Um, your mother's favorite, where uh, a small monument has been put up to your mother. Uh, the reason why it was your mother's favorite is that there was, is, a fountain there. And as you stand there looking at the fountain, the monument, this urn to your mother with flowers and rotted bouquet in it has been kicked over to the side. You have no proof of it, but it's appeared like this before and you think it might be your brother Marcus trying to get a rise out of you yet again. I will step over and pick it back up and neaten it back up and set everything back in order. As you do so, you hear from the water surface. Thank you, Bran. Why are you so sad? And if you look, you see your mother standing in the fountain, mostly in the water, not actually standing at her knees, but just shoulders poking up above the water. Why are you so sad? Yeah, because you're dead. But I'm clearly not. I'm right here. Come join me. Come in the water. You don't have to be here. Don't have to be in this miserable place anymore. Step in the water. I... Step in the water, Bran. We'll put my hand out to her. Slowly move towards the water. And as you do so, her hand snakes out of the water and latches onto your forearm. And like those creatures that you saw in Rizante, like the deep one you had just fought recently, her hand ends in these claws with these scales webbed fingers and begins to try and pull you in. And I would like you to give me an athletics roll. And 17. I don't, 17. Here. You manage to start pulling your hand away. And as you look at her, her vision, her visage, begins to change as well. Her mouth widens out. What hair she had, that red hair, same red hair that you have, begins to fall out in streaks as scales cover it. Sharp pointed teeth break as her molars fall out. Join me, Bran, in the water! 
and her claws dig into you and you look down at your bare unscarred skin and rippling from where her claws are embedded into you scales start to sprout on your own skin and she starts pulling you into the water as you try to resist scales fins coming up your arm here and as soon as you are as soon as you are about to be pulled in you hear a call and a raven comes down as these scales are coming out it lands on your shoulders buries its beak into your flesh and its claws and its talons and an intense pain and a warm burning brightness spreads forth from these wounds and a scream is heard as your mother is plopped down into the water and you pull back your arm and you can see that the scales have receded from this light that sort of burns underneath your skin. And as you stand there watching this raven takes off again as this monstrous splash comes from the fountain and you look up and we'll go to Anja. Uh, But we're going to pause for half a second here. I have to put a kid to bed here real quick. Oh, come on. I will on. be right back. <laughs> Tell him that story. That'll put him right to bed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. Hide well, your feet. The monsters will eat you. Oh, my. Yeah, don't worry. Well, We're all <laughs> fucked. <laughs> you should probably talk about the uh, Fred campaign logo. What? Oh. No, no, no. That you're, that you're designing. I, I, everyone what everyone needs to see it. Designing? Well, no, I don't. It's well, on like, my computer the computer at work. What's the thought process? I'm going to find one a volcano with uh, a volcano with Cthulhu's head behind it. Actually, it was um, Frank had created a logo, but it was really just kind of a couple clip arts put together. And uh, I was like, that I could like probably. Frank. I, yeah, I can probably. I was like, I could probably do better than that. He does a really good job. Like, if you guys see the uh, Calamity campaign uh, logo, that came out friggin' awesome. But this needed a little sprucing up, so I'm gonna take the Cthulhu from that, redraw it with the volcano with the tentacles wrapping around the volcano, and our name is gonna be on you know, cred or Cthulhu rises, everyone dies is gonna be on the volcano. I almost feel like Cthulhu should have bling. You know, Fred. Bling? Yeah, Fred. Fred. I keep going the Craig campaign. <laughs> yeah, just bling out the theater. Sorry, folks, while we vamp for a bit here, and I sit here ooh, and ooh, worry about put, what like, the it, fuck it, am I going to He kind of has like a grill, like, you know, he's got the rings on his tentacles that say Fred. <laughs> no. no, I'm not going to do that. Although... <laughs> bling Thulu. Oh, no. Maybe maybe some smoke coming out of the volcano spells Craig well, in the sky. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I would, yeah, probably because it's a volcano. So it should probably have smoke coming out of it to indicate it's a volcano. I suppose it could also have, like, I could try to do fire. I don't know how many, well, it's a t shirt. I guess I could do multiple colors. But yeah, that was my thought. Anyways, I started it, but my work has been killing me lately. Are you going to put any, like, quotes or anything on it? I don't know. Or like spell right what now. cred means? Yeah. I put that. Okay, yay! Kyle's back and I'm friggin' doomed. All right, let's look at those comments on Twitch. Kyle, you dick, why did you walk away? <laughs> Fuck you, Kyle. Fuck you. Oh, and read the one with the doom, too. There is, someone, there is someone that actually posted that Brand's gonna have a bad time. I think he did. You're gonna <laughs> have a bad time. <laughs> All right. Uh, so we came to Anja. Oh, yeah. no. did I do that? Thanks again? everybody for waiting, by the way. Okay, I might have to make you all wait again because what? I lost my. Let me see, make sure I can pull it up here. Anja, uh, last time you had a dream, 
you found yourself in a strange marble city. Yeah. Are we back there again? You find yourself back there again. You are once again at the walls. Do you remember what you had seen mm, last time as you had climbed those walls? I can walls? find the notes here because I did actually write notes. I can figure out what session, what session was it in? <laughs> It was a while ago. You haven't had it a good dream in a while. while yeah. I mean, the, actually, technically, the last dream I had was the one that we all shared. Oh, true. Shut up. Not the dream I'm talking about. The April Fool's one. Uh, I dreamt of a... Let's see. I dreamt of the strange the city. creatures laying, laying siege. You hear that's a horn right. call. It was a captain. That's right. There was military figures, and the captain yelled at me to put my uniform on. Yep. I followed him and climbed up the walls, walls that are made of the same stone that was uh, in the bag, the Welcome ones I. that were recovered from oh, the, the kid. I. That's right. Welcome I'm I. glad someone keeps good notes. It's not me, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I'll have notes. So, Anja. The city was under, city's under siege. The city is under siege. And a horn sounds, and I woke up. And you woke up. Are we continuing? You dream that, tonight. You find yourself again on the wall. These strange creatures, tentacles on their face, tiny wings upon their back. Although some of them are using these wings to fly, and it makes no sense. Strange uh, uh, vestigial claw coming from their hands. Um almost looking gorilla-like and yet completely unhuman with this slick skin. The commander turns to you. Anja? Yes? I need you and your forces to go out there and start killing monsters, sowing discord among the enemy. If we aren't able to do that, I don't think this city will survive. Yes, sir. Uh, and I will. I look at. I assume there's a huge throng of these creatures. Humongous. They are probably about 500 yards out. You are, of course, head of the guard. You go out beyond the city walls to help protect it as well as defend it from inside the city walls. You are captain here. You lead a ragtag group of members just like you. And you don't know the way, but at the same time, you know the way. And a, another figure pops up at your shoulder, uh, a young man who you know is... Oh my goodness, where am I? <clears throat> no, I don't have it written down here. You forget your their name in the midst of this dream because you never knew it, but you know it, right? Yeah, exactly, sure. Oh. And with That's that, a- we skip forward into the scene a little bit and we see you, the 15 soldiers underneath of you have all split up. You're all about to go into this horde of creatures single-handedly and begin. And with that particular creature lifts its head in your direction. Which particular creature? One of these particular creatures. No. Tentacles writhing on its face as its tentacles kind of go up in the air, you see an eyeball underneath of it gazing in your direction. Mm -hmm. Now, you strike now. And with that, you throw your short sword directly into this thing's eye. And you go charging in. You are surrounded. 10, 20, 30 of them. And you swing your short swords to and fro, slicing limbs off, killing them one by one. They grasp onto you, but you know how to escape tentacles. You've done it before, and you slip through 
using their own ooze against them. It covers your skin, your armor. But it's better than being eaten. And you slide through. One of them begins pulling out a flute, begins to play it. And you know it's about to cast a spell on you. And before it do again, short sword goes thrown out. And you interrupt it as you stab through the flute and into its chest, run up there, and you begin to take care of it more. And you are slaughtering them easily. And you look around and, you know, a hundred yards that way, you see your lieutenant slaughtering a bunch more. You look down a hundred yards to the other way and you see another one of your soldiers, all of them trained by you are slaughtering these moon beasts. You are going to hold the city, no doubt. And the bell tower rings. The bell again. Uh, Not the bell. uh, The horn the first time. Oh, yeah. The second time. Mm, I thought there was a bell in one of the other dreams or like the early on or something. Maybe, Maybe I'm wrong. I have to go look. And you turn to look, and your city, this wasn't the entire force. A surrounding group has descended. Already they are in the city. Underneath this glaring red star, you see blood spilling out black from across the walls. Again, you turn to your right. Your lieutenant is dead, being devoured. You turn to your left. A soldier, again, one you had trained, is now being ripped apart. And you stand, and all these creatures are dead around you, but you're too far away to help any other. And underneath this glaring red light, you hear a voice in your head rumbling deep then pet your cat cleo it's fine i put my child to bed earlier so it's okay (laughs) that's what the voice says that's exactly what the voice says (laughs) go crazy (laughs) (laughs) oh hi kitty you hear slumber watcher till the spheres six and twenty thousand years oh my god have revolved and i return to the spot where now i burn other stars and non shall rise to the access of the skies. Stars that soothe and stars that bless with sweet forgetfulness. Only one my round is o'er shall the past disturb thy door. I think I'm going to need that in the missive later if you get my drift. I and can't, this red can't read that fast. Glowing star just burns brighter and brighter, taking up your vision. You feel yourself fall to your knees and fall flat on your face. And yet that red burning vision just grows brighter and hotter. And we go over to Cleo. Hey, Cleo. How you doing? Wow. The snacking on the, the pig. Uh-huh. Or- I was going to do you last, but I saw you taking a bite, and I was like, oh, no. I got to mm, do it now. Pig bones. Mm. <laughs> no, 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 no. I think Riley was to cook this. <laughs> I only cooked the potatoes. <laughs> so, Cleo, you find yourself... Several weeks ago, in your dream, uh, Datura is actually right behind you, and you find yourself sneaking into the temple of Bokob. It's grand libraries lie before you, something you've seen thousands of times. In fact, honestly, you don't have to sneak through here, but the way Datura is freaking out because you're doing something you shouldn't be. It's best not to run across, you know, your uncle or, or Jeremiah or one of those other two good goody two shoes paladins who are guarding the temples. And you find yourself sneaking in 
to get the staff ornament, the relic, mm -hmm. the price to learn more magic. And Datura is grabbing the hem of your dress. We shouldn't be doing this. We shouldn't be making deals. We can't be doing this right now. Turn you pusher. Yeah. You know what to do. Where it's fun. It's fine. And if you can stick something up your stuck-up father's ass to just annoy him, to hell with him. This is for you. Just to have a little fun. And you go to the restricted section. There's a half-elf you see grabbing something off a bookshelf. And you watch as he grabs it, opens it up, holds this orb out looking at it. Here's something, closes the book, and scurries away. He didn't hear you, luckily, and he scurries in a different direction, and you're able to go. And, and you pass one relic, a mighty sword, a staff of the Magi. Ooh. That's not what you're here for. That's not the price that's been asked. The Torah is telling you, no, we can't be doing that. We shouldn't be doing this. I can't be doing and as she finishes that sentence there in front of you the ornament ancient looks old beyond belief it hasn't held up anywhere near as nice but it lays on a silken pillow with diamond and gold honestly this pillow itself would be worth far more than this rusty thing dangling from a chain. And honestly, to learn magic isn't... No one would really mind if you took this. Yeah. And you do. Because that's what you did. And you turn. And as you're making your way out through the temple doors... The Torah crashes a candle holder down on the floor. Boom! Can't take a tiefling anywhere. Boom, boom. <laughs> right? They're terrible. It's that tail <laughs> thing, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> if only it were just like some cool bat wings or something. But man, no. The tail mm -hmm. causes trouble. And almost instantly, Jeremiah is there. Your uncle is there. One of your brothers is there coming down the hall running towards you you have to leave you leave Detora there on the ground she she'll get out and you know that if your family finds you hanging out with her once again that they'll bar her from ever entering the temple again especially after that Albert incident and you flee leaving her behind and as you exit the doors of the Temple of Bokom, you step out and you think to yourself that you're going to find a familiar scene of Arulkatan. You step out into a vast, starry night, walking on liquid glass, glimmering and shining these orbs, some pale blue as the moon, others fiery and bright, others showing bits and pieces of time, and others cold, black, sucking at the life forces around them, and they spin around you, and... There's thousands, tens of thousands, maybe millions of these orbs. And no, you don't listen to your father very much or your uncle or your family member, but you grew up in this religion and you know 
this is the sanctum of Bokob, the god of magic, the god of knowledge. All things written down, he knows. Here is magic you could learn. And you feel a connection to all of this magic around you. You reach out, touch one of these orbs, and it's magic that you could possess. (laughs) And you realize it's not just a fireball or a lightning bolt. That's not all that's here. It is truly knowing magic. And there are these little dots that float by and you reach out to touch one of those and you realize it's knowledge, the fundamentals of how magic actually works. Something that's brimming inside of you. And these orbs contain the knowledge. Strangely, it's knowledge that you've heard your father say time and time again. Be careful, Cleo. Pay attention to what you're doing. Cleo, sometimes it's better to keep your mouth shut and pretend to be a fool than to open your mouth and remove all doubt. Others, as you pass through, and you feel yourself being drawn and drawn deeper until eventually you reach a point in the sanctum and you realize it's not whole. A huge chunk, corner of this room, although it's a never expanding room, a chunk, a corner of this has been ripped and torn away. And you see nothing but utter blackness. Some of the orbs themselves have been ripped and torn asunder as well. And you can see the magical essence leaking out. Wait, this is my dream? This is your dream. Or is this like my memory? Is my memory being ripped apart? Once you've entered... Well, (laughs) that is an interesting question. (laughs) We will answer that later. You, You ponder that as a character. Because some of this is indeed those little balls with memories of your father's wisdom. Some of those are also ripped and torn apart and they're pouring out into this gaping, utteral blackness. Just swirling down further and further. And you take a step on the edge to look down and your foot slips and you fall. Deeper and deeper into the blackness, you turn and look behind you, and the stars are disappearing. I feel like I'm These entering orbs are disappearing. right now. Mm-hmm. During... <laughs> and finally, Riley. Dun, dun, dun. Riley, in your dream, you, you edgy warlock, you <laughs> begins in a graveyard. You're on a path of ancient stone. Tombstones are rising to your left, to your right. There is fog shrouding any vision behind you, to your left, to your right. But in front of you, you see more of the... hmm, You see more of the cemetery rising. And while there is fog that way, there is a pulsating green light ebbing from that way. And so you walk forward. The tombstones next to you, weathered rune you can't read, slowly become more clear names start appearing on them 
Tim, Steve, Stavette. <laughs> Random names. And you hear sounds now to your left and right. And if you turn to look, you see these shapes hunched over the closer they are to the green light but slowly standing up taller and taller moving from a lopping gait to a tall stride as they walk past you and away from the light while others that like you are walking towards it begin standing straight and slowly curl in on themselves until they are eventually walking forward on all fours nothing more can really be tell you can tell about these figures and again as you get closer the tombstones they read more names and then they begin to tell about the people themselves knowledge they've gained and underneath the steps of your shoes hitting these old stone tablet walkway that you're walking on. From him we come, from him we return, from him we come, from him we return, from him we come, we return, from him we come. Getting louder and clearer as you begin walking forward and soon you can't see left or right of you. There's nothing but these tall mausoleums built to these individuals and every detail about their life from the very first thought of birth to the last last whispers of their mind at death this is knowledge this is gained and collected And you eventually come to a clearing where stands, oh, I have to remember this now, five pedestals. Unfortunately, I have this all written out here. Uh, I have a whiteboard underneath me, and I put my elbow up, and I smeared right through Riley's dream sequence. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm so sorry about that. But you see five pedestals in front of you. On one sits an ancient stone tablet floating. There's moss growing from there. And if you look from a distance, if you focus on it, you can see words are just scrolling around, becoming chiseled into the stone as you look at it. The next pillar holds a quill and ink. And again, this ink, the quill, starts writing. And from the ink, you see these ancient barbed weapons meant to grasp a letter opener in some cases actually I'm going to recall that right now because I really like the idea of a letter opener you see a letter opener on a pedestal ooze swirls and odd geometrics ink dripping from its blade on the third pedestal we replace the quill with the letter opener you see this huge tomb and it opens on occasion and there's words and again more knowledge and it's living and you're not sure what and then the ink itself pulsates out of the book a slime before coming back and returning into the world the fourth is one you were familiar with, an orange sphere on a string. But this one has a life to it, like you could stare into it and know, know everything, get lost in there. 
and the last pedestal sits empty. And you pause for a second and look. And there's Lycor from the repository in Rizante, the half elf, tall, thin, now looking wretched as these scales have completely consumed him. He's crouched over. I want it. I want it. And he's trying to go after this knowledge that's beyond his reach and he can't. And you see from his head this, again, the starry essence flowing from his brain. I want it. I need it. From him we come, from him we turn, from him we come to him we return, from him we come, from him we return, from him to come we return. And you can see fangs are coming out of his mouth and he's getting more crooked. The scales become thicker, but then they begin to dissolve away and he just becomes smaller and smaller as he's screaming these words until suddenly he can't, he doesn't even have a mouth and he turns into this ooze that finally is able to get past this barrier and as it goes past the pedestal towards the green light this primordial ooze continues on and it leaves behind the skull of Lycor which floats up off the ground and rests upon the fifth pedestal what would you like to do Riley? um yeah, I want to walk towards the ooh, that fourth pedestal with the orb that has life. Oh, or the first pedestal that has the tablet. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay, so the representation of my patron is the, the tablet, so I'm going to go towards the tablet. <laughs> On the first pedestal. Okay. And as you begin walking there, like Lycor, something is preventing you from going there. And you realize what Lycor was doing to get past, to get through, requires knowledge. This huge cauldron of knowledge. While it looks like it's all knowledge, it, it needs more. If you want past it, you have to give it more knowledge. I don't know what to do. Do I have anything on me? Do you want to go to the pedestal? Yes. I am very curious. A memory comes back to you of going into a restrictive section of pulling out books. Your mentor at the bookshop has showed you this restricted section, but you don't have any memory of it until just now. You have to give it knowledge. And as you reach out for the template, misty essence comes from your head and you feel knowledge leaving you. And hey, Mr. Notecaker, we have had eight sessions. I would like you yeah. to grab two D8s and roll. Two D8s? Two All right. D8s. The first one, a two. And the second one, a seven. Any notes you have written in session seven and session two, remove them. 
Oh, no! Keep them in a separate folder safe somewhere, but your character no longer remembers it. <gasps> oh, no! I don't even remember what, what happened in those sessions. <laughs> oh, shit! I don't recall. <laughs> well, that's interesting, because well, wasn't session, se- session 7 the last session? Yep. <laughs> hey, can, I can will I... say you can remember events somewhat very shakily because it's not an entire week's worth of memories just no 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 but it's, no yeah. no no. i was in the grasp of the deep one in the water next thing i know i'm sleeping on a beach <laughs> done i'll take it all right hey, session two session seven i mm. i do i do have a question here Is it mm-hmm. just just for, for funsies so riley you've been taking notes the whole time of like your adventures right like in character yeah Riley has. Yeah, yep. yeah. I have my tome. Are, I've been taking the, notes the entire time. Are the, are the, are the, have these gone in the tome too? Or I want to say yes. Head? You're is in it, a dream right now. I don't know what's happening to your outside body. I want it. I want to know what <clears throat> happens. It's so awesome and horrible. But I get this tablet. I get this thing, right? You grab this tablet and it is light despite how large <laughs> it is with words and knowledge. It's It's there. And you had to do something to get it. What did you do? Doesn't matter. It's right here in your hands. You have it. And this pulsating light of green glows deeper. And you find yourself once again drawn. Because there there is all knowledge. And you can have it. You just have to keep going forward. And so you do past libraries now instead of mausoleums and there in the distance mounted upon three giant stone tablets your patron oh yeah and above it is this starry room with orbs Some of them look like they've been ripped out, ripped in half, this glassy room, and it's slowly devouring, and these tablets underneath it are slowly rising, and these other primordial oozes are slowly crawling through, perhaps one of them Lycor. And you hear a crack behind you. And you turn to look. And we'll end the dream right there. Uh, For Anja, please do me a favor and roll a wisdom roll, please. Check, right? Yes. Just, Just to make sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. Okay. Oh, that was not great. Eight. Okay. Each of you wake up and you are at the campfire sitting around just as the wind blows in and the gutters and the fire fade out. The warmth and the light is all gone. Every sound is amplified. You hear the snap of a dry twig. You turn. You see nothing. And you realize you see nothing. You don't see the moon. You don't see the stars. There's no one else around you. The campsite is empty. And as you look up to where that moon is supposed to be, you find yourself gazing up in horror as not only do the clouds part, but the sky itself seems torn asunder. Nameless, shapeless horrors. You can barely comprehend it. Let alone describe, come boiling out of this impossible void, descending toward you, tentacles writhing and bulbous eyes gleaming. And now you actually wake up. But first, give me a dread 
saving throw. Who was this? Was to me? This is all of you. Oh, well, I apologize. Okay. Yeah, I was a little like saving. Wisdom save, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, for fuck's sake! Uh, eight. Same roll. Apparently, didn't get any roll sixes tonight. Yeah, no shit. Seventeen. Pass. Same seventeen. Apparently, that's a. That's a good one. Score. Pass. And Bran. Dirty 20. Oh, nice. Yes! Anja, you have one level of dread. Do you need reminded of what that does, or are we good at this point? Oh, uh, remind me. Yeah, well, crap. I don't have it pulled up, so screw you. <laughs> <laughs> you are disturbed. Uh... Do I get an extra level since I have no idea why I'm here on the beach? Oh, that's a good Oh, thing. wow. I'm, I'm rolling again. Go for it. Nine. You fail too. Oh, no. You have a level of dread, but you don't feel it. Any feeling of being disturbed is not there for some odd reason. Uh, and with that, let's do one more perception check, please. Made at disadvantage from all of you. Everyone, huh? Mm -hmm. Wow, actually, hey, that wasn't terrible. It's disadvantage? At disadvantage. 15 okay. for me. 15, good. Uh, 13 is my low row, plus 4 is 17. Good. 11. Fail. <laughs> Nine. And also a fail. All right. Uh, Anja, Bran, you wake up to sounds of scurrying, and you see... One of the Bondwa twins. Let's see. Sorry, you see one of the Olgawa twins. Banda, the elf, half-elf, tossing the bag of Wilkmite stone over to Ola, who's at the far edge of camp, and she begins booking it down the shore. As do the rest of the people. Uh, I, I begin <laughs> running. Why are they all run yeah. barely super, semi supernaturally fast? <laughs> and with that, guys, if you failed your perception check, make a initiative at disadvantage. If you succeeded, you may begin um, as normal initiative. Hmm. I think disadvantage mm. might have helped. Doesn't Let's matter. Do I got a six with both rolls. <laughs> I oh. rolled a six as well. And with my oh. four, that's a 10. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> I didn't roll a disadvantage. I made it. Jeez. Not by much, though. You know, sixes. No, no. I rolled like a 17 on my perception. Yes. But, no, I know you're but good. But I rolled a crappy. Brian, what'd you roll for initiative? 16. 16. Okay, so you are good to go. You've just seen Ola taking off down the beach, far outpacing uh, any of the others. Uh, her two brothers are there, the twins are there, and even Nebi is hobbling along, uh, carrying up the rear. A few of them are even doing cartwheels down the beach like, like madmen. What would you like to do? I will go after the twin that has the bag. Twin pass it off to Ola, Olo, who is one of the dwarf triplets. Then I will go after the dwarf triplet that has the bag. All right. You get up. That's half your movement. And you take off. Yeah. So first movement will be a total of 20 speed. Okay. And then I will spend a Kai point to go another 40. Jeez, oh Pete. All right. 
<laughs> if I have caught up, I will. You have not yet, actually. Then I will spend my uh, bonus action to, uh, or I'll spend my uh, action to dash. So another okay. 40. Yeah. All right, let's start with that 60 feet first, because at that point you have reached uh, Nebby. And as you try and run past her, she is going to trip you. Holy shit, that's a net. <laughs> 20 on the die. Dang it, why didn't I try to kill you instead? Uh, so if you want to go ahead, um, it is a check. So it doesn't mean she automatically succeeds. She is an old lady. Uh, acrobatics or athletics to prevent yourself from being knocked flat on your face as you go running past her. I rolled a nat one for a six. No! I did not this expect the old lady attack. Old lady! Oh, no. you, you, <laughs> she's she's so old, from she's those potatoes. slowly <laughs> moving her foot out. Oh, and you're just man. that bag, you get it. Wham! Poosh! Hey, hey, Bran, why is it that you have so much trouble against told people? Because <laughs> they're so close to dying and meeting the Raven Queen. Yes, it's <laughs> like they, 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 they have spiritual power over me. I think they do. He, he got killed by old people in another game. <laughs> All right. So you are, let me roll here. You Bro. encountered Nebby at about 40 feet there. So she trips you. Uh, do you want to get up with your key and keep running past her or? Yes. So that'll only be a total of 80 feet this round. <laughs> only a total of 80 only feet. a total jesus christ i will say you have some more bad news she's a triplet and she has two brothers and one of them again attempts to trip you as you run past him so go ahead and make that athletics or acrobatics check again that's a 14 on the die eight <laughs> Eight. Oh, I rolled a three yeah, no, on time. I, you go flat on your face. <laughs> I am not used to the beach. I am not used to the beach. All right. Oh my God. Let's give you. Uh, uh, as I fall, nice. like, what the hell are you all doing? <laughs> the bones. We're saving our bones, and they continue to run past you. Um, let's go over to Anja. Brand. Dang. Okay, Brand. You are sixty feet. Is how far you ended up getting on that turn do i get to spend the other half that i felt <laughs> again getting back up nope you land prone deal with it. oh wait no yeah 20 40 yeah i'll tell you what you can stand back up as your half second half of the half movement <laughs> okay and with that anja you are up next I mean, all I can do is probably a double move to move 60 feet. You do that. Two action, basically, you know, mm -hmm. dash action. You and pass maybe. by Nebby, but you encounter Casa. And I, and I am going to yell the two. What in the hell is going on? What's going on? Why are we running? We're saving our skins. We're saving our skins. <laughs> Oh shit! And Cassa takes her. She takes her great sword and swings it at you. So <gasps> try and run past shit. her. That's a nineteen on the die. Oh fuck! That's going to so hit. Swings it at you and turns it flat. Ah. Because they got not. the insanity accuracy going on. That is the insanity accuracy going on. Absolutely. You take seven non-lethal damage. Okay. <laughs> oh, that oh. looks like it hurt! <laughs> uh, and yeah, I'll say you make it to 60 feet as well. Unless you want to stop and deal with the mad people behind you. No, I'll just keep going and, and be like, right, just saving... Sa what do you mean, saving our bones? What are we running from? I'm actually, uh, I'm trying to act like I'm on their side. For, for Cleo, that was Cleo, right? That was asking that question. Oh, huh? Cleo, why would you do that to me? So uh, I believe the answer is no, we did not get a long rest because we did not meet the requirements for a long rest. We you could have, have not. You could have taken a short rest, though. So you can gain back hit points by that. 
Okay. Yeah, I know that's right. She's... But no long rest, so sp- uh, Cleo spellcaster is a little bummed. <laughs> oh, it's wonderful. Uh, with that, um, Riley and Cleo, you are at the camp still. Sand has been kicked into your face as these crew members of yours run past them. It's like you predicted it, Ernie. How do you feel about that? <laughs> what is going on, man? Uh, can I use my bonus to like roll an insight check to figure out what's happened or like what the situation is, what I need to be doing? I assume I saw one of the twins run off with uh, Wolkamite and another one of the twins swing so one of the twins sword yes. at Anja. Mm-hmm. So would I know that we're in combat? I would say you know that you're in combat. You know the crew is making off with uh, uh, this Wilkamite. And they're they're mutinying, it appears. Oh, that's bad. Uh, how far away is the one with Wilkamite? Uh, 75 feet. Okay. Eldritch Blast has a range of 120. Yeah! Yep. <laughs> I'm gonna Eldridge Blast. You're gonna murder all, right. all of them. Nat yeah. 20 plus yeah. 7. 27 Nat to 27 hit. Plus 20. Yes. Uh, so I, I got I got I got that. So I'm gonna roll my damage. Mm-hmm. Uh 15 blast Fif- damage. 15 damage. Alright. Yeah. You knock her hard, and she is now limping down the beach as fast as she can and do you go running as well or do you stay in the camp that was my action i guess i get a movement mm-hmm. um now i'm gonna stay in the camp all right i'm i'm uh i'm still like figuring out what's going on my reaction was like that and i'm still processing sure uh anja bran the craziness has gone two extremes the moment this eldritch blast i don't even know what it looks like this misty green pulsating blast i guess yeah yeah let's go with that yeah let's go with that just streaks by you and slams into olo and from happy gleeful tittering turns the gas (gasps) and uh yeah something bad is gonna happen now uh cleo you're up Eight. Wake up, you're prone on the ground. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh Anja, you are mm-hmm. forty-five feet because you have to stand up from a sleeping position. Oh right, right, yeah. right, 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 mm-hmm. right. Yeah, that was my movement. I stood up. Yeah. <laughs> thank thank you for clarifying. You're you're correct though. Yep. What's your feeling, Cleo? Um how far away am I from all this? You, um, so you are about 45 feet from Anja and the twins. Bran is 60 feet from you with the triplets, with Ola 15 feet ahead of him. Nebi is hobbling along at about 30 feet away from you, but she's also trying to run in that general direction. Where's Jeremiah? Yeah, where's That's Jeremiah? Good question. <laughs> Make a perception check. Oh no, 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 no! Is this no, advantage no. still or no? You can make this one at advantage. Something is going on. Where is your hunk of hunk of burning oh, love? Oh God! I mean, Ten. I don't know how much I know. You don't <laughs> see him. Maybe he went Should... to use the bathroom. I don't know. Is that? Oh. They murdered him. Do we see him up? Do we see him up with us? <laughs> Also, well, where's, where's Kenz and Aiden? You haven't mentioned them yet. <laughs> they uh, have awoken, and they're trying to figure out what's going on currently as well. Oh, so They're cool. in the camp with you. Nice. All right. And then Aiden pulls out a dagger and stabs Captain Kenza in the back. Oh my God. What? No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. That's a joke, guys. That's a joke. He would he, he'd never do that. <laughs> okay. Uh, and so with that, I'm going to... Well, Cleo, you didn't say what you were doing. 
are you going to get up and start running after them or what are you doing? You've looked around for Jeremiah. You didn't necessarily see him. You still have a movement. You still have a bonus action. I guess I go towards everyone, but not running. Just like, I guess if everyone's moving, I should too. (laughs) (laughs) You get up. You take Mm -hmm. five foot steps forward and you're done. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, but you know what? That puts you at a higher initiative than Riley. So I don't have to worry about that anymore. Uh, (laughs) So first off, Olom... Well, no, first off, someone give me a D12, please. I don't care who. Leo, roll D12. What? Leo, roll D12. Do it, Cleo. Make her do it do now. It. Do do it. Trust me. Do right. it. Sure, sure. If you get purple hair, I mean, how could we not trust yeah. you to be lucky? Sure. Eight. That's pretty good. Eight? Eight. All right. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, we'll play through the low is better. <laughs> you True. continue roll, running down the beach here. Uh, Olo uh, continues to sprint ahead. Uh, she's now 150 feet away from the uh, uh, main encampment, running down the beach as fast as you can, limping along. Man, a dwarf moving that fast. Yeah, what the uh, hell? We come to the Olo twins and Bran. Uh, I'm going to say the Olo twins go first since they started running before you did. Uh, And that madness uh, is in their eyes as Matt was the one that you tried to heal with the broken arm after falling off the sail. Swings his morning star at you with a reckless abandon. Madness, a 17 on the die. Does a 20 hit you? Uh, yes. Yeah. And he is not pulling back any punches as you take six piercing damage, and this oof kind of oh, catches shit. you. Uh, Ada runs up to his sister as far as he can go and he chants a spell and she is no longer limping down the beach and that was how much okay to hold on okay and then turns to face you. What would you like to do, Bran? I will not stop to think about them. I will disengage my action. Oh, all right. I will continue on chasing. So this way I won't have attacks of opportunity this time. You will miss one attack of opportunity. You will get the other one, though. Unless you want to circumvent it. I will circumvent. Around. I will spend an extra 10 feet to circumvent around people since I have an extra 10 feet. Sure. Uh, and then I will go full dash again. And that's going to be 80 feet with the circumvent. Jesus. How uh, close am I? Less than that with the circumvent. So I think. Well, that's talking. why I said my, uh, you know, with the 10 feet circumvent. So how, how you... That would be like 70 feet. How do you get the dash and disengage? Did you uh, well, no, no, I, I disengage is action. Movement is another move. Yeah, but the dash. That's okay, also my Kai point. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. Monk shit. Monk yeah. shit. How Monk much shit. Uh, key points do you have uh, left after, you know, your long day earlier? <laughs> oh, I get it after short rest. Right now. I get more after ah, short rest. Ah, damn. Yeah. You sure about that? I thought it was a long rest. Nope, short rest. Damn you. All right. <laughs> okay. Uh, at uh, 70 feet on top of what you had, you are. Yeah. Two points per short rest currently. And 20 feet now. 
So you are 30 feet behind. You, Yeah, you're actually not too far off from uh, Ade, who was the one who healed his sister. Uh, with that, we go down to 45 movement speed, which puts the twins and Anja there. I'm going to let the twins go first because they were aware of their uh, mutinous uh, plans. And so with that, oh my goodness. You know, having all these character sheets sucks, guys. Why Why didn't I decide to be a... <laughs> so Casa will swing again with her greatsword. Um, 18. Flat of the blade? No. She sees oh, what happens shit. to Olo. That and will hit. You guys are intent on killing her and her friends. Oh, shit. Uh, that's a five and a six on the die. Uh, these are uh, splendid murder hobo ink die that blend into any green screen background. So you can that's look at 11. That. Okay, so that starts with 11. And... 13 damage as it slices into you. Oh, that's really bad. I'm not sure how the non-lethal works, but I'll figure it out. Whatever the last hit is. Yeah, it's whatever the last. So you just you just take it as damage. Yeah, we went lethal, so they went lethal. Gosh, who who would have figured that out? There's no non-lethal Aldridge blast, right? (laughs) No, there's not. (laughs) I I get it. I can solve this, guys. And once again, you attempt to kill the crew, and for the third time. The crew ain't taking that shit anymore. <laughs> Ow. Okay. That was bad. That was really bad. Okay. I have to check something here. At 45 feet, uh, Banda continues running forward till he is up to 75 feet and starts playing on his flute. And with that, I need a shit ton of D8s. One, two, three, four, five. That's it. Holy shit, guys. 10, 15, 20, 23. Uh, what is your current hit point total, Bran? Oh, Bran. 10. That is, what did I say? 23? I kid you not, Ade has 13 hit points. And I rolled 23 on a sleep spell. And you and Oddway go boom! As you fall asleep. Wait, wait. Yep. Is, there wait, is no what's, save. What is it? The one with, no, no, that's not what I was asking. Is the one with the least hit points or the most hit points? Least From first, the least, then most. Am I in range? No. No. Okay. I've said because without this is, a map. Way, this is way forward. Oh, right, yeah. right, right. This right. is at 120 feet. You are at 45 feet. Okay. Yes. All right, cool. Mm-hmm. As uh, you say, I would be the, probably the first one because I'm probably at the lowest amount of hit point for it now. <laughs> but it is now your turn, Anja. You are at 45 feet. Casa is right next to you swinging a great sword. Uh, my move action would be to draw because I didn't have a mount. Sure. I guess I. I you can draw and draw. attack in an attack. Oh no! I know! I know! I'm like, I kind of feel bad about this. Well, I guess I could do it non-lethally. So I will. I will use my attack action, bonus action to do two. Try to do two hits. Okay. Well, the two is probably gonna miss because that die sucks. The 18, sure. though, which is my first hit with my scimitar, will be a 24. That will just barely hit. What do you mean, barely hit? <laughs> uh, did I have something else here? Oh, yeah, because I don't have any more spells, so. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that is nine points of damage. I'm probably going to die. Nine points of damage. All right. I'll write this down here. Well, Cleo could always heal you. Not lethally. Cleo is way the prick back down at the beach. No, she's she's, she kind of, she's fully forty away from you. I'm not. Okay. I'm not that. I'm not that worried. I know somebody will 
I know she'll probably get to me. All Somebody right. Somebody will help. Are you yeah, my two running at flops. all? Huh? Are you running forward at all? Or are you dealing with Casa as she is right here? I think I'm going to just, I'm going to deal with the threat here. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, with that, we go down to the person who actually moved up next, Cleo. I'm so far away from all that stuff, though. You are about 40 feet away from Casa and Anja. Mm. You are 70 feet away from Banda, who's been casting spells. 120 from a passed out, although at that point, it's dark out. You don't see past that okay. point. So I can't attack anything, I guess. Casa is within range. If you want to start running, you can do that. Do you have cantrips? Can I do Toll the Dead? Yeah, that's a cantrip. Yes, you can do Toll the Dead. I think I move forward right. in Casa. It says from 60 feet, so it's going to be. Yeah, from where you're here. standing, you can do that. You could also okay. move up 30 feet just to make sure the action doesn't outpace you. What would you like to do? How far away am I? You said 40? 40 feet from the nearest. Figures. I'll move up 10 feet. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> That's fine by me. Okay. Uh, and I am making a wisdom saving throw. A 15. Okay. You can go after Banda, who is the half elf bard twin, or you can go after Kasa, who is attacking Anja currently. And oh, Kasa is missing Kasa is missing hit points. That's when you're attacking, right? Yep. Yeah, so I'll go after her. Whatever they that one. All right, so it says it takes one d12 damage. Well, he makes the save. Ooh, not twenty. And he made the save. Oh, so he made it the takes, save. Oh. It takes nothing. It's nothing. a great spell when he doesn't make the great save. Spell. I'm Love rolling awesome spell. tonight, so that's fine. Oh my gosh, I forgot about Nebby. Oh, she continues hobbling up. Um. And she shanks you, Anja, with a kitchen knife. What a bitch. I know, right? Uh, but she is a weak old lady. A seven doesn't yeah. get you, does it? No, seven doesn't get me. I was going to say, she doesn't need to do much. <laughs> she, she does not need to do much damage to take me down. I'm real, I do not look good right now. Okay. Uh, and with that, uh, that leaves us Riley. Hey, how are you doing hanging back there? I, I'm good. Yeah. Um, I feel personally betrayed by Nebby's actions. I feel like we had a <laughs> I know, that's, that's probably the best part. The sweet old <laughs> lady. <laughs> and and just, tries to oh, stab Anja. Like, come on. I thought Red Nebby... potatoes are delicious! Us. And she tries oh. to stab you, Anja. And I go... All right, well... Listen. Now the one with Wilkemite's out of my range. That is correct. So I guess now I'm going to go after Nebby. Oh. Yes! Oh, that sweet poor old woman, okay? She ain't a sweet lady all right. at all well, now. 25 to hit with Eldridge Black. <laughs> That'll hit. <laughs> oh, only three damage. <laughs> is Nebby down? <laughs> she's down. No, she's what? not down yet. <laughs> Please. All right. <laughs> three damage you said yeah okay yeah no she is still still hobbling along but she turns back with you with a vicious looking smile and a kitchen knife coming looking at you yams <laughs> are delicious with sweet steery I'll make a note of that. <laughs> Not <laughs> right. Noted. Not right. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, we had Cleo give me the D12 earlier. Riley, give me a D12. Come on, win. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> he probably free rolled a 12. He's laughing. No, no, no. I'm not the one rolling the 12. Uh, Riley is rolling a D12. Oh, oh okay. Mm -hmm. uh, one. One. Oh, okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> We're all gonna die. We're all gonna die. Ooh, okay. I've got to check out Ola here real quick. She is good to go. Uh, gosh. But no one is actually close enough to her to actually see what's happened. At least no one who's awake. Um, Ola sure. continues running down the beach at a ridiculously fast pace. And I'll write that down there. Okay. Let's go to the next two closest. Ran and Ada, you are asleep. Let's go to the next closest. <laughs> Banda! He Latin. turns around, sees what's going down, and casts a healing word to his sister. Because you guys are monsters, uh, unlike these. Oh, give me a freaking break. And everything is healed back to normal. And he yells at Casa to run as he too begins running forward, which will take him not quite, but pretty close to Ada and. Brand. I'm sure he's not crazy and going to slit someone's throat. Uh, with that, let's go to Nebby stabbing you in the back with a knife, Casa swinging at you with a great sword, and you, Anja. Casa's not going to run, huh? They disengage and they start okay, they running. Do. And so Nebby hobbles along. <laughs> <laughs> and. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, this old lady running just cracks me up every time. She gets a good distance away, as does uh uh Casa. Anja, you are left at the 45 feet mark. What would you like to do? Oh god, I don't I've got like no health. I don't know what to do at this point. Throw your sword at Nebby. Uh, so don't you have a ranged weapon at all? No, I do, but I mean uh, this whole thing has gone to shit. Fine. Shoot him I in the will... knee. Shoot him in the knee. I'll, I'll pull my... I have a hand crossbow. So I yeah. gotta do much... Oh, it does actually damage. Uh, what's the range on that thing? 30. 80. I guess 30 and 120 for a hand crossbow. Oh, who I have a light gonna, crossbow. Yeah. Who am I gonna friggin' aim at here? Nebby. No, <laughs> no, I'm leaving yeah. Nebby to you. I feel betrayed. Exactly. I'm going to leave her to you. It'd be more, more satisfying for you to shake her. I spent so much time with Nebby becoming friends, and Nebby does this to us. They're all crazy. I would freaking love to. It's just so far away. I've got 120. How far am I away from the, the leader, from Olo? Yeah. From Olo? Olo is oh my goodness, you're making me do math. How dare <laughs> you? How Not really, dare but you? I'm sorry. I have a giant whiteboard, so it's fine. <laughs> I love this thing. <clears throat> she is far enough away you can't see oh, her in the dark. Wait. And I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt. I'm adding half your dark vision onto there. You God can't see. Um, Not from 45 feet from the campfire. All right. Where you are. Oh. If you were to run up, you still wouldn't be able to. I mean, what? I'm going to actually, this is like the person. How far away is um, Brand's people? You talked about the one. Like, how far away? I want to I shoot one of them that might look like they could, you know, cut, you know, slice Brand's throat or something. <laughs> Oh, oh, okay. You are talking about yeah. Banda. He is um, within your sight line, 60 All feet right. away. Exactly I'll try to hit vision. that. Oh, wait. What's your dark vision? 30 it's or 60? 60? It's 60, yeah. Okay, okay. So <laughs> in this case, you have yeah. 90 feet of dark vision with the light of the stars and everything like that. Um, so, yeah, you can see Banda up there. All right. I will take a minus two to hit because of the. Wait. 
If it's out of the range increment, it's a, is it disadvantage? If it's out of the right. first range increment, it's at advantage. Second one is disadvantage. Uh, wait, what? <laughs> it's out of the first. All right, so it's greater than. What's 30. your range increment? From ten what? feet. My range increment is thirty, and then one twenty. So then you're at disadvantage. That's all right. Just That's what I thought it was going to be. Yeah. Oh, this is probably going to suck. Mm. I will say if you run up 30 feet, you would then be at normal. All right. I'll do that then. Okay. I did that was further okay. than back. All right. That's true. Uh, mm. That I'm sure will probably hit. That's a 19. Uh, that and then will then hit. 19. A terrible damage. That's five points of damage. That's minimum. Pew. Oh, that's fine. Okay. Bunch. Ghost eggs are falling from the sky! <laughs> I should go grab my actual, like, marshmallow shooter, which is a hand crossbow on my wall <laughs> behind me. <laughs> Stop laughing, Bran! Oh, <laughs> Such a dick. At 15 feet, we have Cleo. Uh, 60 feet away from you are Nebi, Casa, Anja. At 90 feet, yes, I'm giving you 90 feet. So you see Banda just got hit and is now screaming at the sky. You can't see anything past that. I mean, I guess we're still talking, right? They're still running. They're still running, yeah. I move 20 feet ahead. All right. And can I cast Toll the Dead again? You can do that. Who are you aiming for? Whoever I was aiming for last time. Whatever her name I is. I think they're healed. That was Casa. Casa got healed, but the other guy, that one I just Banda. shot, is got. Banda. It doesn't matter. He fucking rolled a 16. I'm sure that makes it. God damn it. Why are your roll so good against <laughs> Toll the Dead? Uh, I don't know. I've actually been rolling kind of decent tonight. It's actually oh been nice God. for a change. Uh, with that, Riley, you are at the end. Do I see damn Nebby? It's gonna kill all rest. <laughs> um, 90 feet dark vision, you see Nebby. Yeah, Nebby. I'm attacking Nebby again with Eldridge Blast. Yeah! Come on, nat 20, right. nat 20, nat 20. Hit. Unnatural 20. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> uh, yes, that'll hit Five Nebby. damage. Old Nebby. <laughs> Is oh Nebby down? Gosh. It's eight total now. <laughs> Nebby's an old lady. What? Not quite. <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> Hey, oh my hey, Mr. GM, is anyone else from the is Mr. anyone GM. else from the crew coming to put an end to this little With, uprising? Like Aiden or Kenza yeah, or mean, Jeremiah or Nookie. 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 Uh, Nookie, you remember. <laughs> oh, sorry, you don't Nookie. remember. Bran, in your sleeping dreams, you remember that Nookie ran off in the middle of the night into the forest. Hasn't been back. Uh, Jeremiah was supposed to have the watch recently, oh. but he wasn't there as far as uh, Cleo's concerned. Uh, and Aiden and Captain Kenza are actually looking for Jeremiah because they do notice he oh, is missing. Shit. You probably killed him. You don't know this yet, though, so you You'll probably find that killed out later, him. Maybe. You've been saying you're gonna. I yes, buy Nebby slit his throat. Nebby slit. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like another bite, dear? <laughs> she grabs a butter knife and is trying to slit his throat, and he's like, Neb <laughs> "Nebby, you need you need to turn the knife over. You got it now." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, with that, someone give me another D12. Bran, hit me up with the D12, please. He's sleeping. How come? <laughs> it sucks being hit with a <laughs> level one spell. It's a great... They made it Four. so much better. 
That is not bad. You know, what's hilarious is they actually say it's not a very good combat spell. It's like, well, they're all wrong. <laughs> no, it's great. It's, I love the way they, they retooled it, too. To rem- I remember using that same spell to put all of my party members to sleep as a yeti then began to kill them and then come after me. And thought it was me. a cool spell ever uh, since Raceland used it to escape on that lake and put the draconians <laughs> to sleep. Oh, I just got some Dragonlance uh, uh, gear from Death Saves. I got the Raceland sweatshirt. I got the Lord Soth uh, t-shirt. All right. Oh, that's awesome. Soth is amazing. Yes. I, I read the, the Ravenloft book, or at least the first one, Night of the Black Rose, I think. Yep. Okay. You guys don't know what happened to uh, wonderful, wonderful Ola well well ahead of you. Guys, don't worry. It's not like you can fail in D&D. You're going to succeed. Luckily, we you can track can them t- on this beach. Wait, wait, you can totally, totally fail in D&D. Where the hell did you come up with that one? I don't know. I just wanted to give you hope before I took it all away from you tonight. Wait, what do uh, we even need this Wilkemite for anymore? Because we made it to the man. island, right? Shipment. Uh, very important shipment. Very important shipment. Very expensive. For, for Kenza. Uh, and the only thing you can actually carry that is worth anything. Uh, uh, other than the secret stuff that you have stashed away in your stuff, Riley. Um, let's see. Let's go back down to... 120 feet, Bran, uh, Ada. Oh, I'm sorry, you're asleep. Uh, oh, that's wonderful. At 105 feet, we have <laughs> Damn it. Banda and I think Banda. He is going to continue running as fast as he can, uh, which means he does need that. Banda. Oh, okay. No, wait. Just barely. Uh, Yeah. I will say, uh, Anja, you see Banda after you nail him in the head. He's teetering over. He rocks over. And then you see him make this leap over this um, empty space in front of him, land on the other side, fall flat on his face, and spin and start making sand angels. Uh, wow. With that, we have. Boop, boop, boop. Let me erase that. Bop, ba, da, ba, da. We have Nebby, Kesa, and Anja. You just tried to kill her brother. Does a natural 16 on the die. Plus a bunch of other numbers hit you. Wait, who's hitting me? Hit someone's hitting B, right? Casa is hitting you, Anja. Oh, I thought she ran away. Uh, okay. She ran away, and you oh, caught I'm up gonna to her. Friggin' drop now, yeah. A sixteen plus what? Sixteen plus uh dirty twenty. Yeah, that's gonna hit. Okay. Holy. Well, I have good. Oh wait, no. I don't have. <laughs> oh shit! No, yeah, no, I have terrible news. Uh, a murder hobo ink is not a one; it's a six. Yeah, and yeah, the other yeah. one is also oh, I'm a down. six. I'm this down. This may be very important. This mm, is. Uh, I don't think you can do enough. Fourteen damage. You can't. You can't do enough to take me out. All right. But you, you do enough to take me down turns slices you you go down bleeding from your side and she again runs uh nebby herself is hobbling along after and we will put them there you are at 75 feet and no one is at 45 feet all right, which leads what? us to. Oh yeah, clearly. Oh, you 35. know what? I totally forgot there was a third dwarf. Ah, eh, let's forget about the third dwarf. He's also running as fast as he can. Uh, and so with that, otherwise I would kill Bran. You know what? He wakes up his brother. 
and Ada is now awake, and the three triplets are off and running into the distance again. That is what the dwarf has done. He was going to kill you, Bran, but violets and posies are yellow! <laughs> and they run down the beach. Uh, which leads us to Cleo. You are at 35 feet. You see Anja fall. Uh, she is within 40 feet of you, currently. Shh. What would you like to do? I uh, help her up. I'm unconscious and bleeding out. I give her two points of healing. Good. That means I'm not unconscious. I'm at two points. Healing word it. or how are you? Oh, healing yeah. hands. Oh no, you gotta get. Cannot to... reach her to do this. I healing. can't walk up that close. How far? Oh, I'm thirty you're... feet away. Yeah, yeah you move. Your moves are right, at thirty, right? 30. Yeah. All right. So I'm, I'm like, I'm real close. Is that you a bonus have... action? You don't have healing word, right? But what is a uh, healing hand? Oh, that's exact? a good question. I have to touch her. Yeah, no, but is it a bonus a action? Action or bonus action? Uh, I guess I it's considered an action. Oh, I okay. wish I could freaking remember. <laughs> oh. Yeah. So right now, I'll have to make a success save, but you can get me next round. I would say you just leave her uh, to it. She's, she's Shut like, up, you dick! Yeah, go after Nebby. Yeah, go after Debbie. <laughs> Screw Debbie. That little old lady had it coming. She was the nicest of all the crew members. I bet she's the one who poisoned everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm convinced right. it was her now. <laughs> oh, that's right. He forgot that he poisoned everybody last session. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. You know what? I don't know why they did this. When did you crash the boat on the sand shore and poison everyone the first time was that the very first episode oh, yes was that the second session yeah, the second episode oh, you're saying he's blocking it was the it second out? episode i forgot all time oh I've my god he's blocking it out oh no you forgot going to the library <laughs> you forgot everything you learned at the little library was that episode two yeah, I think that was then, a, wasn't that episode two hold on hold on hold on you know what hold on Let's go with Cleo's turn right now. Yeah, let's actually resolve. Yeah, sorry, sorry. And we will, uh, uh, we will get back to Riley <laughs> here in a bit. Cleo, you're just running up 30 feet, or do you want to run all the way up to Anja? Can I? You can run all the way up to her. But I can't touch her, because that's like it for my actions, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You are right. running. But she'll be there. Well, you can like lean down and caress her hair, but you can't cast a spell <laughs> Yeah. You guys are creepy. I'm sitting there with my hands, mm. getting it ready. I know Snow White isn't uh, woke anymore. You guys are creepy. All right, you <laughs> run up. You are right next to Anja. Uh, mm. Riley, you... Man, you notice Captain Kenza and uh, First Mate Pasela are both looking for Jeremiah. Why he is a worthless tag-along on this ship why they're bothering looking for him instead of going after the loot, you don't know. What would you like to do? Um, I will move 30 feet forward and am I in range of Nebby? <laughs> uh, <laughs> at 30 feet, you can now see Nebby and Casa. I throw another Elge. Eldridge blast at Nebby. Okay, yeah, bitter. take that. Bitch Doesn't down. eleven hit Nebby? Eleven would hit Nebby. Eleven <laughs> hits Nebby for ten damage. Down goes Nebby. Yes. The knife. You knock her flat prone. The kitchen knife goes spinning up and sticks out of her back. Nebby's the one that shanked me, right? That the, yeah. the final damage attempted there. to yeah. shank you. No, no, no didn't she? She's she took Kasa, me down. Kasa took you down. Oh no, you're right. It was yeah, Kasa. yeah. No, oh. Nebby's just been running the entire time. She's no, 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 no. Nebby, no, Nebby, she took Nebby, a shot at me. Nebby swiped at Anja once and then ran. Bitch, bitch. <laughs> okay. No All right. Uh, with that, <laughs> gosh, I need the last D twelve. From Anja, I believe you haven't given me one. Nope, I haven't. 
Do I really want to? Probably not. Where's the D12? There's a D12. Hey, y'all. Six. Six. My lucky number is six. <coughs> All right. We have three dwarven siblings. <laughs> All right. That happens. That wasn't great for them. We got Nebby. You got Nebby. That's all that matters. That's, that's what's worth it, guys. Okay. <laughs> okay. And with that, we move on to the next furthest at 120 feet. Bran, what would you like to do? Am I awake? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't get to be the cruel DM. It's wonderful. All right. And then we move down to oh, Banda. And he ran. So what is healing word? Is that 60 feet? 30. I'm pretty sure it's 30. I because I'm pretty I'm sure I've used it. Rule you. I said, I'm pretty sure I used it, and I'm pretty sure it's 30. 60 feet. Is it? It is. That was 30. I know, but this is his last spell. And fine. He casts it and then continues to run and dash, and he has to make another. Passes. Okay. He is. Down past you there. Okay. Then we move up to 105 feet. Casa continues running, which will take her over that as well. Casa is... Guys, I don't suggest ever running uh, combat with 17 characters. No, it's not a great idea. Oh, Okay. Uh, Anja, you see Casa jumping over this. I don't black see pit. anything. Oh, I'm that's right. Uh, you're bleeding out. I'm being nice. When do you I can make be somewhat this... awake? I was gonna say, when do I make the death saves? Okay. Well, I suppose if you want to be like that. I um... mean, technically, it's pointless because I would assume I'm about to roll get it. healed. Remember, so... you can actually get to two if you roll a one. I know, but I can't get to three before she heals you me. You never know what might happen. That's not a one, and that's a success. So, <laughs> okay. I believe yeah. if you actually roll a twenty, you actually get right back up your one hit point. That is right. That's oh, yeah. true. That's true. And then she would need to do it. Cleo, you <laughs> are <laughs> right next to uh, Anja. You saw as Nebby got up and started running away, uh, and Casa disappear over a yawning black pit to the other side. I assume you are going to healing hands, Anja. Yeah. Please. That is your action. Anja, two, you have two hit points. Two points. And what would you like to do? Wow. You can continue running after them. You can stand where you are. It's up to you. Uh, all of your brushing <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> And <laughs> Nuki runs past you and she catches the Welcomite and slays the dwarves. The yes! day is saved. The cats are always awesome. Uh, run or stay. Run or stay. People are disappearing. I'm going to use a sorcery point. A sorcery point. Oh. And I guess because if I do that, then I can do cure wounds as well. On you? Uh, probably. That's probably still no. an action. So next round. To quicken. You are level two right now. Oh, I don't you get do it. Not it's have like meta magics yet. Oh. oh, okay. You'll get. Yeah, you'll get there. Um. So do you, let's, do you have any spell please? slots right now? No. So I'd get like an additional spell slot. Okay. So that's just how it works. For your bonus action, you convert those two sorcery points into a first level spell slot. Okay. So next turn. You have one spell slot if you want to try and use that for something. Let's go with that. Is that all right? Yeah, that works. Okay. Second question. Do you want to keep running or do you want to stay here with Anja? 
stay back. Disappearing. I'm trying to die. All right. <laughs> and at 30 feet, we have Riley. What are you doing? Do I see Nebby get up? You saw Nebby, that bitch, get up. The what knife the falls out of her back. What the fuck? She skips along like she's only 12. It's because Banda, years old. Banda cast Healing Word. Mm hmm. I thought she was. Oh, okay. I so, thought she was dead too. Yeah, she. No, he's. Can I? He's can I? Playing it like the feces. Um, can I move thirty feet forward and then see Nebby? You can Either. indeed. She is honestly not that far away. Good. I move thirty feet forward and cast Eldritch Blast again. <laughs> All right, you do it. Hit that old lady. Kill her. Kill that. Twenty-two old lady. to hit. That hits her <laughs> right dead center. <laughs> <laughs> Two damage. She's no. still skipping a lot. No! <laughs> She's gonna outpace you. Ah, uh, that's fine. She is outpacing <laughs> you. That's the Weird. best part. She's just hobbling along, just barely out of your sight range. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do this all night if I need to. <laughs> all right. Uh, the triplets are gone. And I roll. Banda is gone. Casa is... Casa is almost at the edge of your vision. So he's gone. Casa is almost gone. With that, we go back to Bran... It has not been a minute yet, but we are getting Sorry, so much Brad. closer, Brand. I wanted to come up and like kick you, Brand, just to wake you up, but Yeah. Nebby goes skipping it. past your sleeping body, Bran. <laughs> uh, kicks a spray of water, but not at you, Bran, so you don't wake up. <laughs> uh sure. I know. I'm sorry. Such a jerk. It's so funny though. <laughs> Anja, I can't wait until I GM and I... he's a player again. I'm focusing oh, everything. Oh, on. Oh. Uh, I love the DM character. I'm gonna too kill much. him, bring him back, so I can kill him again in one second. No, it's no, it's gonna be on a one shot Saturday. That's right. And it's gonna happen twice to... in one shot. All right, Anja, you are prone on the ground you have been healed two hit points uh who can i see by the way you can see a <coughs> corpse washed up on shore <laughs> wearing all black and actually its head is propped up a little bit out of the sand Not for some the... odd reason uh if you want to get that sideways profile brand so she understands what's happening <laughs> <laughs> mm, I already knew he was. A, I knew he was. Uh, I knew he went down. I knew he was. He was you don't know how he went down. That's <laughs> true. I haven't got to you yet, but I'm not gonna. You know, basically, I'm looking for. Let's yeah, just leave me for dead. Uh, no, I'm gonna get up there. And you can see Nebby as she kicks a splash of water. That pool of blackness that you saw Banda jump over appears to be a tidal pool. And she's, the and only she's one just I can recently see. reached it. She is currently the only one you can see. I want to leave her to Riley. <laughs> I don't mind you shooting your crossbow at her. <laughs> uh, she, I mean, she is part of this mutiny. She's running. She's running. So is everybody else. What are you doing? Come on. Uh, you know, we're no, not I'm ending gonna, on time, but I'm come gonna, on. I, I'm gonna no. I'm gonna stand up um, okay. and basically see if Cleo heals me anymore because I'm at two hit points. All right, Cleo, you're up. And I think this is a lost cause until we track them down. So what? We're just giving up then, I guess. Well, I mean, I can, uh, yeah, I, I was gonna say if you guys want to give, I up, can track you can them. Give I mean. Up. The the goal is I the Wilkemite, like, and that's gone. I wouldn't even bother. Whatever they're I'm doing. pretty sure your goal was not the Wilkemite, Riley. Well, the goal <laughs> is the Wilkemite and revenge. <laughs> I am saying, we pursue, I, I'll look back at Riley and Cleo. Unfortunately, Fran is. Are we I'll just say, 
let these people be i don't know we should really rest we're gonna right. we can track we can track them i mean we can try to heal you more do you want should we like find a place to take a long rest i mean i guess we could finish our long rest all right Anja. Save it. Get it. Oh. <laughs> i'm so gonna yo, go over i'm to going Dan, to... i, I want to go over to brand though okay yeah. uh yes you can reach bran at this point and um is he snoring turn, he is... <laughs> is he snoring? ironically i'm quiet as the dead <laughs> oh no okay or bran he died too soon we hardly knew you <laughs> actually knowing bran he'd probably be happy <laughs> that he's dead and with his raven queen <laughs> Riley, you are at 60 feet. You see Nebby. Oh, isn't it Cleo's turn? Uh, Cleo opted to fall hey. out of the chase. So right now, yeah. you are the only one still in the chase, unless I get back to Bran and he decides he wants to pick it up again. But I think at that point, you've just... Well, I can catch up, bitches. <laughs> I, I move 30 feet forward. Do I see uh, Nebby? <laughs> you see Nebby at the edge of a pool. <laughs> Eldridge Blast! Alright. 25 to hit. That'll hit. Damage. 7. Splashes into the water. Yeah. Floating there again. Somehow the knife again spins up in the dark lands in her back. For the second time. Oh my god. I was say, does a tidal pool take her out, never to be seen again? We'll find that out in a bit. Or Don't worry about come that. back at some point. <laughs> They're all yeah. All right, top of the round. Let me do a quick roll. Casa is gone. That is everyone of the mutinous crew has made a run for it, and you four slash floating Nebby in a tide pool uh, are out in the dark. Uh, Captain Kenza and. Uh, first mate Aiden are still back at the camp, as far as you know. What would you like to do? I think we're heading back to camp, aren't we? I mean, Bran, I guess you could catch them, but... Well, I still have about four rounds of sleeping. <laughs> you wake him up. <laughs> and I no, think I wake him up. No, I, yeah, my, I would spend my turn uh, with him up. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I should have clarified. Slowly that. look up. Are you okay? Lifting himself up, assessing the situation. Calmly. Like, Man, are you okay? Are you okay? He's alive. He's not like, you know, I feel false. Do I see Nebby nearby? You see. Yeah, Nebby is ahead of you. Uh, in Half in, half out of the tidal pool. I will go over to her body. Okay. Pull out her body and check her. Okay. Is she dead? Roll a medicine check for me, Bran. 17. 17. Uh, What's your medicine? um, Plus what to medicine? Plus six. Plus six. Um, You could potentially stabilize her. And put her at zero hit points. She is fading. The knife wound will in do her it. back. Roll a medicine check for me. It's possible. Doesn't I, have, you will I do have a healing kit. And I have healer. I don't know if that'll... All right, let's see. Twelve. Twelve. You bring her to zero hit points. Uh, you do use up the use of the healer's kit. To get her to there. Oh, if that, then I actually heal her hit points then. If I use up a, a, a part of the healer kit. You uh, bring anyone who's in death saving throws to zero. Is that correct? Or so up to one? So with healer... Uh, healer, you can use the healer's kit to stabilize a dying creature. That creature also regains one hit point as a, as an action. 
You can spend one use of the healer's kit to tend to the to a creature and restore one d6 plus four hit points to it, plus okay. additional hit points equal to the creature's maximum number of hit points. All right. Do you want to leave her unconscious at zero at one hit point, or what do you want to do? Unconscious, so unconscious. I can take her back without her being loopy. Okay. You do that. And with that, around the corner of the beach where none of you can see, there are the five remaining crewmates running down the beach, celebrating, whooping, hollering, dancing in a circle. And you failed. And that's where we will end tonight, folks. I blame Kyle. Huh? I blame Kyle. I do too. Oh, you hate me? No, uh, I blame well, you. I tell I you blame what. You. Oh, you blame, blame me. Blame you. Okay. Yeah, no, we well, don't hate you, guys. But, guys, but it is your. But it is the thing that was would have been pretty hard to win, guys. I what will do time? something that will make you feel better. Uh, the next time we meet. We are going to assume you've got a rest because you did a crazy thing last night. You are exhausted. You are going to wake up at level three. Oh, cool. Oh, okay. I mean, despite being a bunch of failures. <laughs> no, I don't Experience think that was in, uh, very... In trying, right? I don't mm-hmm. feel like that was particularly a winnable scenario. I think it's... Oh, it was winnable. It is I winnable. Sure it like super hot. <laughs> it is winnable. Uh... And they suggested that I make you fail, so I was like, "Oh, okay. oh man, I could have caught them in the first round if I had made if I had made those acrobatics <laughs> checks. It really yeah. would have been great." All right, That's let's true. go around the table, guys. I want to thank you for watching Murder Hobo. This is the Cred Campaign. Cthulhu rises, everyone dies. Uh, join us in two Thursdays to watch uh, Cthulhu rise from the Wilkemite Stones and the mutinous uh, crew uh, summoning up Cthulhu. Uh, next Thursday is going to be Cacophony. But that's next week. Let's not worry about next week. Saturday, Calamity Campaign. Sunday yeah. is the Frank Tri-Generational. That's, that's four Franks. That's a DM Frank and then four generations of Franks. So Three generations we're going to stick with that. Franks. I don't care. Guys, <laughs> uh, final thoughts real quick. Let's hit up Cleo first. Final thoughts? Um, that was or like a blast lot. the people. Wait. Or blast the people with all your connections. connections? Follow me on Twitter. Follow. Uh, no, oh, I'm being no. mean. I'm being mean. No, I'm not being mean. I'm just reminding you that you know you have a fandom to run. Don't forget to push yourself. Yeah. yeah. Follow me on Twitter. Tiefling King. <laughs> um. But sorry, there's just like a lot of people in that fight, and something like that, I feel like, and I would just ignore it and walk away. You always have that opportunity to do I, that. I tried I to. I was like, it I is actually the smartest thing to do in any call to do the game. Yeah. <laughs> Ignore it and walk uh, away. Nope. Don't care. Uh, Riley, final thoughts. Uh, I thought those short dream sequences really add some creep factor. I thought that was a good touch, and I'm interested to see what this uh, tablet is. Uh, that I got in my dream, <laughs> what that entails. And uh, yeah, fuck that Nebby. Uh, I, don't, <laughs> I, I don't know why. Uh, actually, I don't remember why I have such an attachment to her, but <laughs> I felt the train. I was going to yeah. say, uh, yeah. two weeks from now, let's find out what Riley doesn't remember. <laughs> yeah, I don't know I'm gonna what the read. crew did to make us wake up on this beach as they're mutinying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah all right uh brand final thoughts i think the whole episode was excellent the dream sequences are spot on especially since it wasn't so much in our control uh which is very appropriate for any call to the game and adversity just makes victory sweeter it really does so when shit goes right for us it'll at least be better Unless it's a true call to do the game and it just never goes right for us. Never again. Don't worry about it's it's D and D and Cthulhu. It's something it has to go right. The dice uh, give it to the dice take it away. <laughs> that is true, man. I I always just shrug that off whenever Frank says that. 
now I laugh at all the natural 20s I rolled to kill you guys tonight and make this difficult, and I, I believe him now. Uh, Anja, final thoughts. Uh, Are you I'm glad gonna... I didn't say Anja at least seven times? Okay, yes, I am. You got my Do name. It. You got my name right. That was great. Uh, yeah, the dreams are good. I'm very interested to see where mine, mine apparently is just going to be one continuously long story. And I'm, I'm totally digging it. I'm totally there for it. I love it. Uh, it was, yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. Um, although that, yeah, I knew we were probably not going to be able to, they, they just had too much of a head start. Okay. And I know, well, okay, I know Bran, okay, let's face it, I do know Bran has the speed to get to them, but does Bran have enough hit points to basically, you know, to fight all of them until we all catch? Oh, no, it just would have been me grabbing it and then, you know, going faster than them and getting ahead of them. I, I by the way, I don't think it's a, I don't, I'm not going to go over the all out failure. I'm going out with that success is just being delayed. I, I think that we can track them. Sure. Sure. I mean, just run an island. You, you know? are a ranger. Where are they going to go? I am on a ranger. I do have survival. Uh, I do have survival uh, as one of my proficiencies. And uh, actually, it'll be interesting because I go to level three. And we'll although... see what happens there. We'll talk about that next time. Yeah. As well as roll hit dice for that next time. We'll talk about that when we get there. Uh, final thought from your DM. Uh, Make sure you know what your monk's movement speed is and not what you <laughs> think it is. Everybody wave to the camera. Good night. Watch the show on Saturday. Thanks Calamity. It's going to be awesome. Watch Good it.